All right, this Steve says, boom fans. This is something that hasn't happened for a long, long, long time. Um, and the origin of this little uh, video begins many, many moons ago when Dan Slot came and did a signing at Torpedo and me and Dan got on like this, okay? We're very like-minded. We've both read the same issues time and time again. So our knowledge of previous Marvel continuity is ridiculous. Um, he also heard my concerns and, you know, as to why I don't really read Marvel anymore, why I'm, you know, I'm sort of blasé, sort of, uh, sort of over it. And he said quite confidently to me, he goes, don't, don't throw the towel in yet. He goes, I've got a story coming up, which will relate to some of the concerns that you have said, uh, what am I talking about? Well, it's finally here. This, I just read this right now. Less than five minutes ago, I finished it. This is Fantastic Four Reckoning War number one. Of course, uh, written by Dan Slott, featuring wonderful pencils by Carlos Pacheco. Um, so, <laughs> what to say? It's very weird for someone like me who used to be so knowledgeable and like knew all the different tangents of all the different storylines that were going on to be reading this issue and to be in certain sections certain pages and panels utterly lost but you know uh the first major revelation is by the way if you don't want to hear any revelations stop watching now it's revealed that the watcher has returned after the events of that ridiculous original Sin story uh, from 2005, I think it was, which the, the story that basically left made me leave Marvel. I left it. I refused it. It was just the biggest pile of bleh that I've ever read in my life. Um, now, it would have been nice to have something that we used to have in the old days. It would have been nice to have had a footnote as to where that event happened. Apparently, uh, the Watcher came back and he changed, you know, Nick Fury uh, into his herald there's no footnote there's no there's no information telling you where that was in the old days there would have been a footnote and i could oh okay i could follow up on that one of the weaknesses of modern comic storytelling in my opinion okay um so this story basically involves the original flashback to the origin of the watcher of course and the reason why the watchers you know made their uh edict that they will not uh, interfere in the affairs of anything or anyone ever again. It refers back to that event, giving it a new name now. Not, it wasn't just one planet, you know, in a, you know, in a nuclear missile, or whatever it is, nuclear bombs. It's a huge event that they call in the First War. And the Proskillians are uh, now known as the Reckoning. And uh, they are going around right now giving these super uh, weapons, you know, that uh, are basically of Watcher technology to other races. And so we have the Badoon here, which, who I'm f very knowledgeable about the Badoon, uh, coming to, you know, destroying the moon. Just, you know, it destroys the moon. All the shards come down and rocks, you know, to Earth and then boom, the Fantastic Four uh, and all the other heroes are involved. And, you know, first things first. I see Jack of Hearts here. The last time I saw Jack of Hearts, he was dead. Um, incredible. And the funny thing is, there is a footnote in here. There is a footnote. Incredibly. Um, because it has the, t the TVA making an appearance. And they reference something and it says, you know, back in She-Hulk, uh, volume two, number three. Thank you for that footnote. It would be nice to have other footnotes. Uh, so, of course, uh, how Jack of Hearts came back, I don't know. Um, and also, there is another little thing here that... Again, there's a, a character in here. It, apparently, the son... Ben had a son? Little blue kid. I'm <laughs> totally lost. <laughs> who is this little blue kid? And then uh, they had a little, there's a little green girl in here. I don't know who she is either. 
So the, 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 the again, that's my fault, you know, for being unaware and not following on with, you know, for stories and stuff like that. But that just seems pretty weird. There's also the use of an artifact in there. Um, the Watcher's uh, ball, like an, it's, it's like a, a, a glass uh, ball that you put on your head and it gives you a vast amount of information. Um, it would have been nice to add a footnote there for other people who don't know, but that's the same little uh, glass container that was put on the head of the leader back in uh, Tales to Astonish. Oh, must be what, issue 73, I think, if I'm correct. Um, it's funny how I know that, but I don't know who, I don't know, it's a long story. Uh, so the main thing is here, it's not a bad little setup. It also has uh, Doctor Doom, uh, and it has, of course, a character called Zora that he leaves in control. Uh, I did hear some rumblings that he'd got married or something. Uh, so I don't know what her origin and stuff is like that. So he, he's flying off into deep space, I suppose. And also, uh, when it comes to um, major cosmic events, I did not know that Eternity, you know, now has, uh, you know, a partner in space right now. Um, who is this person? Uh, who is this? Okay, uh, well, I don't know who Griever is either. I don't know where Griever first appeared. I don't know what it is. It's really weird not to be knowledgeable about cosmic stuff, really. It really is amazing. Um, yeah, there's another, there's like a this greenish large female entity that apparently is, you know, I don't want to say married, but sort of is, is the partner of eternity. Um, so again, in many ways, maddening for me not to be aware. That was always one of my strong points uh, when I used to be, you know, reading and stuff like that. So I guess the main thrust of this is, was the story good enough? Did it intrigue me enough to follow on? My better instincts tell me to leave it alone. Because there's always going to be some stupid little event. Something weird that only humans have that wins the way. It's always been the way. We've always had an amazing little bit of luck that no other civilization has ever had. No other universe, no other parallel timeline. You know, and somehow that's how we win. You know, and I'm tired of that. I've, I've read it again and again and again and again. If you've only been reading Marvel for a year or two, hey, have at it. Um... And this is one of the things that Dan Slott promised me wouldn't be part of this story. But I I don't know how he's going to get around this. So, my better instincts say leave it alone. But I am going to try and follow this story on. The story continues on in uh, Fantastic Four number 40, I think it is. What does it say here at the end? To be continued, Fantastic Four 40. And I, I have that issue here already. So, uh, I mean, I can read that. But I thought you guys might be interested to see what happens when someone like me, who's been away for so long, suddenly throws himself right in the middle of this massive story. Um, again, I'm sort of intrigued as to what happened. How did the Jack of Hearts come back? And by the way, I also love the fact that he's in his original costume. I guess I can say thank you for small mercies, right? Because that he does appear in his original costume. So anyway, uh, I'm going to try and post this on my Steve Says Boom YouTube channel, which I've had a tremendous amount of problem with trying to upload anything. It doesn't want, it doesn't like anything to be uploaded anymore, but I'm going to try it there. So uh, let's see what happens. Let's see if I can upload this thing. Boom.